All right, you already know how it is. We're opening up the video with yet another disclaimer because this is one of those things that was not written about in an article. This was not published in the newspaper or talked about on the radio. This is purely just an idea that I saw floating around on Twitter. And we all know that Twitter is the best reliable source for all things hockey because a lot of people on there are kind of crazy and it gets into a very heated cesspool right away. But this idea is one that I saw and I started to think about a little bit. I was like, darn, that's not a bad thought process. Not gonna say the idea is good, but I'm gonna say the thought process and the philosophy behind it is actually good. And the reason we're making a video about this is because it garnered so much traction that the entire day yesterday, the player's last name was trending on Twitter, and I'm in Vancouver, so you could understand how that's sort of a big deal. Today we're talking about the Montreal Canadiens, and a player on this squad that, for all intents and purposes, could be the perfect trade piece in a deal with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Let's talk today about Kirby Doc. And it's not because Kirby Doc is a bad hockey player, which is why he's included here, but rather, Kirby Doc is in the very unfortunate situation of being potentially trapped in the middle of things. And as we discuss this idea further, it would start to make a little bit more sense as we go along. The reason we're talking about Kirby Doc is because of a tweet made by, what's the name of this user right here, Mike Vini. He posted this on Twitter yesterday, and this got so much traction that the word Doc was trending in Vancouver for most of yesterday. Take a look at this. Columbus, they want a center. They also appear to be very impatient and not willing to rebuild. I don't do trade proposals because it's always usually a blank show in the comment section, but here we go. Give or take a few picks or prospects for balance, obviously. The idea goes as follows. Montreal sends the fifth overall pick and Kirby Doc to Columbus for third overall. Now, this is a really basic idea, and of course, Mike is saying if you don't think it's fair, add on some extra things to make it valuable for both sides and equal it out. Okay, that's your prerogative, but the main meat and potatoes of this argument is using Kirby Doc as a trade ship to go from 5 to 3 in the 2023 NHL draft. Now, part of the reason Columbus is being involved here is because we've already seen rumors about Columbus and that third overall pick being in play, maybe for a center like Elias Lindholm on the Calgary Flames. That, of course, is a pretty extreme example because Lindholm is a guy that I don't really think is worth what a Leo Carlson or an Adam Fantilli or a Matt Vemishkov could be in their primes. But the Blue Jackets want to win now, and we know they want to win now. They had a bad year, a lot of their players underperformed, but at the end of the day, this is still the team that signed Erica Brands into that big deal, they signed Johnny Gaudreau, they traded for Provorov, they traded for Damon Severson. This is a team that at this moment in time, with that third overall pick in their possession, is wanting to compete now. And if you're unconfident that a third overall player like Leo Carlson could come into your lineup and make an immediate impact that is at the top of their game, you could trade that third overall pick and get a guy that can help you more so than Carlson will today. Of course, I'm just throwing out Carlson because he's the projected third overall pick, but you could replace that comment with any name in this draft that is after Bedard or Fantilli. It's just an interesting idea to see the Montreal Canadiens potentially use Kirby Doc as that piece to get that third pick instead. Now, fifth overall is nothing to scoff at. I don't really know if moving up two spots in the draft is worth losing out on one full Kirby Doc, but the philosophy brought up in this argument is that the Canadiens will no longer be in a position to wait and choose. Instead, they'd be able to choose themselves. The reason I say it like that is because this draft has four guys that are at the top that really just take over in terms of ceiling. Of course, we're talking about Bedard, Mishkov, Fantilli, and Carlson. These four if they pan out to the best of their abilities, could be just absolute game changers and players above the expected potentials of everybody else past fourth overall. Mishkov is the outlier because he may even be available past tenth overall, but when it comes to ceiling, 
I'd be remiss to say that these guys don't have some of the top ceilings in this draft class, and it's not even really close. I like Will Smith, I like Gabe Perot, I like Ryan Leonard, I like all the NTDP guys, I like David Reinbacher, Sandine Pelica, I like Zach Benson, I like Andrew Crystal, I like all these guys. But Bedard, Mishkov, Fantilli, and Carlson have the highest ceilings, and it's not close. So, the philosophy behind this trade idea is to get rid of Kirby Doc and move up. To go from a player with Will Smith potential to a player of Adam Fantilli or Leo Carlson potential, depending on who goes second overall. And the extended philosophy is the Canadians wouldn't really be missing out on Kirby Doc too much if they're guaranteed to be getting Pierre-Luc Dubois in the future. This is a team that if you had Suzuki Dubois Doc somewhere down the line running your center core, that's a little overkill, to be honest. Like, obviously, it's a good thing to say all of our centers are good, but we've seen this time and time again with other organizations that sometimes having three top-of-the-line centers just doesn't work. Maybe I'm biased because I watched the Vancouver Canucks wither away their chances with Bo Horvat, JT Miller, and Elias Pettersson all at the same time, but this is a system where if you traded away one of these players and got somebody in return that could be as good as a Mishkov, for example, you could twist my arm and convince me. Now, I've been seeing a lot of replies to this individual tweet saying, oh yeah, I would do that 100%. Others saying, are you nuts? Why would you give up on Doc that easily? But the fact is, it's so divided based off of what I'm seeing on my own social media that I think this is an interesting enough topic to make a video about. I think because of the divergence in opinion between Canadians fans, nobody seems to agree. Is this a great idea, a good idea, an okay idea, or a bad one? Heck, if you even just get a Leo Carlson, that is a big improvement over Doc. But the philosophical question is, would you rather have Doc and let's say Will Smith, or one Leo Carlson? If Leo Carlson becomes Matt Sundin 2.0 like we've been saying this entire time, then who knows how well that sort of conversation translates down the line. And so, either way, you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your opinions about this idea? Not even just Kirby Doc getting traded to Columbus for the third overall pick, but Doc and the fifth overall pick for third. You could say, oh, what if it's just Doc for third in general? I mean, if you take a look at it, Kirby Doc was also a third overall pick back in the day, and that's kind of a meme, I get that, but... With conversations arising nowadays that the Blue Jackets may trade their third overall pick to Calgary for Elias Lindholm, Lindholm is definitely much better than Kirby Doc is right now, so I'm inclined to believe that just Doc for third straight up is not enough value. So you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you think Doc is the price to pay to move up two spots from Will Smith to Leo Carlson in the 2023 draft? If you're able to finagle some sort of a trade to get third overall without trading away number five, then you could do something incredible. You could get Mishkov and Will Smith if you really wanted to do that. But... At some point, you gotta max out spots on the roster that you're building in the future. Suzuki, Caulfield, Slavkovsky, etc., etc., etc. There are limited spots for limited names when this team is in its prime and contending again. So, you can let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. What are your opinions about trading away one of these pieces to get this third overall pick instead? Thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Shrolson 99. And, bye.